Eight years ago, when I first started investing in camera equipment, I would always hear the saying, date the body, but marry the lens. This basically means that camera bodies come and go. You may switch systems, but lenses, lenses are a long-term investment. And today, we are talking about one of the best investments I've made in my filmmaking career. What's going on guys? Today we have a very special video for me because this is the culmination of months, if not years of research on cine lenses, whether I should get them or not, where I should put my money, and if they are even worth it. As a few of you may know, I recently picked up the DZO Cine Lens set, and I wanted to share with you how these things have impacted my filmmaking career, what direction that you may want to go to in the future, and a few misconceptions about Cine Lenses. A constant question that I get is, do I need Cine Lenses? Should I progress my career towards Cine Lenses? Are they even worth it? And that's what this video is for. If you are having that thought, or if you're wanting to learn more about Cine Lenses, what they do, how they may benefit you, we are gonna go over how they benefited me and maybe you can learn something from that because these things have definitely impacted my filmmaking journey and hopefully I can share that impact with you. Here we have a seven lens set of the DZO Vespit Cine lenses. These lenses are effective budget lenses aimed at people who may be transitioning into the Cine lens life much like me, and they are just effective solutions. Now, I bought these lenses with my own money. This is my investment because these felt like the right path for me to take. These are a stepping stone set of lenses. If you are wanting to transition out of photo glass, maybe you're wanting to look into something like this. With that being said, these lenses have impacted me just as much as any camera have. Now, we are going to go over my history of filmmaking and lenses why these lenses stand out to me, how I actually use them in the field and in my everyday shoots, and maybe if something like this is going to be right for you, or if you may need to go in a completely different direction. All right, a little bit of backstory. So when I first started doing anything with video, I had kit lenses and the Nifty 50 from Canon. So basically nothing but photo lenses. As I grew as a filmmaker and I grew and started switching camera bodies over from Canon to Sony to Blackmagic, I would still be using photo lenses. And even though I was switching from camera to camera, the few photo lenses that I had would definitely stick around. So I think I made an investment in buying a Sigma 85 millimeter 1.4. That lens stayed with me for like three or four camera bodies because lenses, don't really change that much and I was still able to use it from Canon to Sony. The downside is these lenses were cheap photo glass. So when I switched my business basically from doing photo and video to doing nothing but video, the video cameras I bought couldn't really take advantage of the lenses that were being used. For most things, photo glass was fine. And besides, there was no good budget cine lens option back then. I tried to work with the Rokinon, like $300 cine lenses, and they just didn't seem effective enough for me. And I couldn't see myself investing into something like that because the photo glass I had at the time just outperform that older glass. So I kind of had an idea on why I should get cine lenses. Like they had a longer focus throw. So when I'm pulling focus in video, it's much, much easier. And I cannot stress how much easier it is to pull focus with cine glass. There was less chromatic aberration. It had a softer look to it that I was often trying to replicate by using filters. Like right now, I'm using a photo glass lens that has a ProMist filter on it, so you get this nice hazy feel to everything. And Cine lenses just had a better build quality because the run and gun aspect of the everyday shoot life, the plastic builds of lenses were definitely, definitely rough. And I know the Nifty 50 back in the day really, really struggled in that area. To put it simply, photography lenses are sharp. They have a lot of contrast to them while Cine lenses feel a bit more nostalgic, if that makes sense. Now, with all of that being said, you can get some amazing results with photography glass. Cause when you think about it, 95 to 98% of everything that I've ever shot in my life has been with photography glass. And I've gotten some incredible results out of it. But if you are starting to feel the limitations of the lenses that you're using, if you wanted to do more narrative work, or if you want to completely 
you know, impact the look of the work that you're creating, then maybe the next upgrade in your kit is going to be an upgrade to your lenses. I started to feel these pains, especially with the compatibility aspect, because me, I switch camera bodies kind of often. Like I love tech and I love gear. And I went from Canon to Sony to Blackmagic to Sony to DJI. And every time I would have to figure out what lenses was compatible or what adapter I should have. Cine lenses, you can buy a PL mount set of Cine glass and they are going to fit every single camera that I have. And that is an awesome feeling to have. So with that being said, I got this seven lens set of Cine glass from B&H. It was honestly a steal because these were like $8,500, $8,800. And I got them on sale. They were used from B&H, a set of seven for about $6,300 and their PL mount. And the PL mounts are usually a little bit more expensive. Um, the EF mounts go on sale a lot, but I really wanted something that was universally compatible that I do not have to think about ever again. So these are the DZO Vespit Cine lenses. Probably the best bang for your buck Cine lenses that you can get on the market today. I know there are a lot of competitors and there is a lot of lenses that I looked at, but when it came to character and quality of lenses, build stylistic look, these just fit the bill across the board for me. And when it came to budget and affordability, these are something that stood out again and again and again. I've been using these lenses for about six months now and I am absolutely impressed with their performance, the build quality and the visual impact that they have on the client. Pulling up with a case of these lenses and this is the case. Pulling this out during a client shoot it has a nice impact to it because presentation is a lot when it comes to filmmaking, but this is something for me, I get to have a separate case for my lenses. I don't have to think about it. They're there, we have them, they're packed, they're universal and they are uniform and I love that. And this impressed clients that I've worked with, they comment on it often. And so from a vanity standpoint, it's also effective. So if you're looking to up that presentation, Setting lenses are there for you to do that as well. But for me, it was strictly performance and it was strictly convenience. My lenses are T2.1 across the board with the exception of the 90 millimeter macro. This is a T2.8 lens. And real quick, if you are wondering about the difference between T-stop and F-stop, F-stop measures how wide your lens opens. T-stop measures how much light actually hits the sensor. And for simplicity, in case you're new to T-stops, T2.1 performs very closely to F2.1. These are all PL mount lenses. The Vespit Cine Primes are actually user swappable, so you can swap between EF and PL. I went with the PL lenses because if I get a red, or if I wanna shoot these on my DJI, or if I wanna just bounce back and forth between Sony and Blackmagic, these fit all of those cameras. I don't have to worry anymore. And that was pretty much the biggest takeaway for me. Now I can finally sell all the photo glass I have because I have comfort in knowing there is a wide range of lenses that I can use for any camera I may get in the future. So with all of that being said, let's talk about how I use these lenses. I use these for pretty much everything now because that was a big reason for me to buy them. This is kind of my growing moment as a filmmaker because I'm fully stepping away from autofocus and investing in a better look and better lenses. And that sacrifice is autofocus. That's the one thing you give up, but it makes you grow as a filmmaker. It makes you think outside the box because any super high-end film production they're not using autofocus because autofocus doesn't know how to tell the story, but you do. And that's what these lenses do. They give all power to me as a creative and they make me uncomfortable, <laughs> but that means I'm growing. And that is the sacrifice, autofocus. And because of that, you get a beautiful, beautiful image. And I love the results that I've been getting with this glass. It's not clinically sharp like photo lenses are and it doesn't have a ton of character like vintage cine lenses may when they have so many flares and so much character to them but these have such a nice nice feel to them 
personally, I feel like these bring out the best in my camera because these are how your camera sees the world. Lenses directly impact the image being represented by your sensor. These just so happen to have such a soft and nice representation to them, but it's not overkill, like over nostalgic, over vintage, because that doesn't work for me in every production. And you may want that. You may want something that has such a very unique feel for it. And these are going to give you more of a middle ground. They won't lean too hard clinically sharp and they won't lean too hard overly nostalgic. And all of that for the price that these lenses sit at, man, I have no regrets. Being able to buy these in a set and the lenses get cheaper when you buy them in a set versus just buying one off. Um, you can buy them in a set of six, a set of four, a set of seven, 10, like any weird number. I'll definitely leave some links down in the description below, but they are very versatile with the focal links. And I just finished filming a commercial yesterday with these things and the look I was able to achieve definitely had a very, very nice touch to it. I am personally blown away with how natural everything looks and truly do feel like I'm leveling up as a filmmaker because man, this is, it, it definitely feels like a hefty step. And yes, it is a hefty investment <laughs> through and through. Okay. So what does my future with these lenses look like? These are budget cine lens solutions, and these are what I would consider to be like entry level cine lenses, but they do punch really high above their weight class. And I love that about them because for me, all of the research, all of the looking, there isn't anything that's under about six to $8,000 that really has a impactful and noticeable look change to it, if that makes sense. So I have to go up about four lenses, five lenses worth of price just to get a little bit better quality. And for the work that I do, these are going to be fine. <laughs> these are going to be just fine for a very long time. And because I see myself phasing away from autofocus entirely, I think every photo lens I have is just going to bite the dust and these are just going to replace any and everything that I may have, because even filming this YouTube video, I'm not using autofocus because I'm using the black magic and I'm just gotten used to it, man. I do see myself upgrading in the future, but that'll be when I want to get what I would love to have is cook lenses. Cook lenses have just such a warm and inviting feel to them. But man, for the work that I'm doing right now, that's just not the best investment, but getting cine glass on this level really does have an impact across the board, whether that be client interactions, whether that be ease of use in the field. And it's just a great long-term investment that I don't have to worry about anymore. And besides, if I need a lens that is that insane, something that is like $10,000, I can just rent it. <laughs> like renting is still an option. I, I buy almost everything that I have and I love owning it. But if I need something that's that out of the box, and if you need something that's that out of the box, just rent it. I'm sure I will upgrade my camera bodies time and time again, but these lenses are going to stick with me for the long run. And there is so much comfort in knowing that. So final thoughts. If you are looking to deepen your journey as a filmmaker, if you're looking to grow, improve your skill set, or really push the image that your camera produces, then you probably want to look into getting cine lenses. It took me years, <laughs> I mean years to get to this point, and I really wish I had invested in them sooner. And the timing is right. You know, I've learned a lot of valuable lessons, and I finally understand why I need these lenses. And even having the ability to recognize that is growing as a filmmaker. Having a full set of seven is really refreshing because I know that I have every focal link covered. And if you are looking into getting a set of seven, if you're wanting to get the full set of 10, if you can't get all of that and you just want to get one, bro, pick your favorite focal link. Right now, mine is probably 50 or 35 on full frame. Get one 
rent one, try it out, see how you like it because having that hands-on experience with these things really did change how I felt about sending glass. I was always, always, always pushing it off and pushing it off. And then when I finally got a chance to use it, I fell in love with how it makes the image look, how it feels on the camera, and it's just totally worth it. But with all of that being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm bringing you more content just like this every week. So you guys stay safe, you're loved, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.